Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Maya with Simply Bloom. It's currently snowing and I am so excited. It is January 6th today, I believe, and we finally have snow and everything just instantly has so much more beauty versus just brown dead. So I live in Northern Minnesota, zone three, and I thought I would run out here and do a January garden tour. I'm gonna try really hard to do a monthly tour every year or every month this year for 2024. I wish I had other January tours to show you the difference of how much snow we typically have in January, but I would say it's normally well above the knee as you're walking through. So it's very strange. We have like this much snow now, <laughs> but it's snowing and it's beautiful. And there's some frost on the leaves. We got some, um, freezing rain before we got snow. So it's kind of like frosty and gorgeous on the leaves and the branches. And anyways, I thought we would just do a quick garden tour. So let me turn you around and just kind of begin the process. Okay, I just think everything looks so much prettier now. So starting off here, I have six hydrangea standards, three on each side that line the driveway. And you can see the, the whiskey barrels just kind of line the driveway. They go all the way around. Right here is probably one of my favorite trees on the property. It is a red splendor flowering crab. Let's see if I can focus on the berries. The berries look really dark right now. I know it's after the freeze, they look almost like a dark burgundy, almost black. Um, I do have some <laughs> Christmas lights on this tree still. We'll be taking those down soon. Oh man, there's just like a layer of ice. I don't know if you can see that on the branches from that freezing rain. And all the berries have this layer of ice around them. It's so hard to tell. Um, unfortunately the trunk split so my husband like braced it and every six months he takes the brace off and readjusts it so we're debating on this tree will probably have a brace on <laughs> for a while or we replace the tree and but I love the structure of the tree so trying to decide what to do here I have my rock garden, just blanketed with snow. Oh, and there's Jasper. <laughs> He's six months and full of life. So <laughs> he's been fun to have. Uh, but rock garden is covered with snow, looking gorgeous. I have my three David Austin roses. Um, hopefully I put down some straw around them. When was that? About a month and a half ago to just help protect them from the cold winter because they're only zone four. I live in zone three, but we've had such a mild winter. I'm not concerned at all. So there is our fountain. I love the fountain, but um, with the ground freezing and, th and thawing, the fountain has shifted. So it's not level. So we use it more as a statue. Someday I'd like to properly level it, but we'll probably need some heavy equipment to lift the layers off because they are very heavy. Over here is my cut flower garden looking like a mess. I just left all of the annuals up for the birds to feed on and then we'll deal with it in the spring, but that's why it's just a mess. But I always see birds and wildlife over there. So that makes me happy. And I have another three hydrangea standards here that I deadheaded. I love to leave the flowers on. I think they're beautiful winter interest, but there's another one I'll show you. I just lost another big branch because <laughs> I didn't deadhead it. Every year I lose big branches on it. So I thought, you know what? I just planted these, I better protect them. Um, so I have a couple arbors. One fell down and then I'm actually adding another one in between the two. Uh, we will be planting grapes on the back three. And then this one, I have a clematis. This A-frame just has Christmas lights on, looks downright ugly during the day, but at nighttime when it's lit up, it's magical. <laughs> We've still actually been turning on the lights even though it's after Christmas, but I love it. Um, 
Okay, so there's another three more hydrangea standards. Oh, and I have a bunch of Bobo hydrangeas. I have five on this side. And then, is it five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five more over there. There's a rototiller. So it looks absolutely gorgeous. And then this tree, I know I said the other one was my favorite, but this one's also a favorite. This is a blue diamond spruce. Zone three gets 25 feet tall and 20 feet wide. So I read that it was extremely slow growing, but like, look how much growth we had in one year. That's insane. That's all new growth this past year. So as love and life, <laughs> it's growing way faster. I think they said it would take 10 years to reach 10 feet tall. Um, it's well over 10 feet and it only took like two years to get there. So as when we, when we bought it, it was half that size about. Okay. So over here we have another crab. I believe this is a snowdrift crab. It gets these beautiful white flowers in the spring, orange berries, um, but it doesn't keep its berries. It drops all of its berries. So we don't have that winter interest like the red splendor, but I love the structure. It just has that perfect ball shape. Love it. I just have to show you the pine trees with the snow look so gorgeous. We did not plant this one. This is a white pine. It's right at the entrance of our driveway, but it is so gorgeous. And then we do have these Nishiki willows. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't get enough sun here. I feel like it gets still, you know, still at least six hours of sun, but they just haven't grown. But this next season, it will be their third year. And you know, the first year they sleep, second year they leap, third year, no. First year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap. So hopefully they'll take off. Okay, coming up next to the house. This is a limelight hydrangea standard that we lose a big branch is on every year. And you can see right, oops, right there, another big branch broke. And <laughs> Is like all the snow we have it's like what's going on so disappointed very disappointed but everyone loves this tree um it's the first thing people comment on because it's massive we do not prune it back every year like you're supposed to so that might explain the breaking branches but this one we just let go and do its thing here's another standard limelight standard I need to deadhead, but just look at what I was talking about, how gorgeous the blooms look with snow on them. Gorgeous. Here's a spirea, did not do well last year. So I'm thinking of just, it's old, half of it died. It just needs to come out. So I'm trying to figure out what to put in its place. Over here, we have another rock garden tucked in with snow. This is probably my favorite planting area that I added last year. This rock garden is gorgeous. It's underneath this big maple clump. We had a maple, on a blaze maple, I believe, die back. You can still see the original trunk. And then um, this is when you're in Montana for five years. And when we came back, it had all these suckers coming from the base and we just left it. And it's this beautiful, just clump of maples. Right here, I have all these asters. I still have corn stalks around the arbor. <laughs> um, but these asters were beautiful last fall. And I have three monge lilacs planted in the middle. And I kind of want to prune them to be like a tree shape. So eventually, this will be a shade bed when they grow and get more mature. So I'll have to transplant these sun-loving plants around the outside. But for now... I'm really loving this. Coming right over here. I didn't really show this bed much last year. I have an arbor and a wisteria that goes over top and this ornamental grass. Um, 
I'm really not sure what to do with this bed. There's some really beautiful aspects to it. I don't like the grass the whole year because it looks like a hot mess to me. Spend all this time keeping grass out of my flower beds, so I really don't like planting grass in them. But during the fall and winter, the grass gets this beautiful plumes and they really are gorgeous during the fall and winter time. I have a couple roses on either side there and there, they're campfire roses. Um, there's this really beautiful spirea that blooms these beautiful white flowers during the spring. I'll have to see if I can remember the name. But then they just look messy to me. <laughs> so the, everything in here is beautiful in its own way, but all combined together just looks messy. So we'll see, maybe I'll do something with that this year. And then coming right over here, that's our chicken coop. We're gonna use all those um, wooden fence posts to make a run for the birds because they keep coming out and ruining my garden. So this bed here is the one I just planted this fall. And I think it was October, was I still planting in November? I'm not sure, but there's this little baby blue spruce and I love it because the top broke off. I don't want the top on it. It's this beautiful little sphere and it gets 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide, um, which I don't mind if it gets to that size, but I want to keep it in that sphere shape. <laughs> so we're just going to have this little round ball and it's going to be so cute. Um, I have a rhododendron right there. I've never tried them before. It's a stretch planting them uh, in my zone, but they were on sale and I was like, why not? Let's try it. Um, so yeah, and just a lot of other perennials I just planted. I don't, do I want to go through all of them? I don't know. I'll leave the videos linked down below so you can see, but I'm super excited. This will be our garden. You can see the fence posts on the backside. We just stretched up a fence on the front so I could get these planted and then I need to continue the fence. So that's that. Scooting back to the house. It's right across from the the garden there. There's another limelight hydrangea standard. You can tell I love them because I planted a lot of them. Need to deadhead that one as well. I have some beautiful Proven Winners Luminary Ultraviolet Phlox there coming around the corner. I love the sumac in a way because it has a beautiful structure, but it keeps sending up horrible suckers. So and it shades, it shades a lot of this bed and I have roses and hydrangeas and some pots that have been there all year <laughs> that I need to take care of. You know how that is. Here's a vanilla strawberry hydrangea. So I'll probably take out that sumac. Um, I'm tired of fighting with suckers and it's shading the rest of my sun loving plants. Right here we have a, um, hitching post for our horses and a saddle stand. But I have two clematis planted on that arbor and then there's still just like open space there and I need to decide what to plant there. Let me know if you have any ideas. So this is our tack shed here. I'm hoping to repaint it. All right, I have just some more roses. In here, Rubecchia, three clematises planted on that trellis. Everything's just kind of shut down for winter. And then, and then coming around the deck here, I have a smoke bush, a purple, I believe it's like a wine, what is it, wine something, smoke bush. I don't know the exact variety, but it's beautiful. I have these quick fire hydrangeas. They're a lace top. So beautiful with the snow on them. And these are our first hydrangeas to bloom. They start blooming like a whole month before any of our other ones do. I have a, what is this? A blueberry muffin viburnum. I hate this thing. <laughs> the blooms, gets white blooms, smell 
so bad. So I really want to take that out this year and put something else. And then here's a nine bark. And then it kind of repeats itself over here. Nine bark, viburnum, hydrangea. I have a, I think it's called like a prairie rose. Thorny little buggers, but really pretty. And then here's like a false cypress. I believe that's what it's called. Look at how pretty that is with the snow. And then another smoke bush. And here's another quick fire hydrangea. So I have three of those and it smells so good when they start to bloom. It just perfumes the air. It just hits you in a good way. <laughs> I love it. Here's another one of those prairie roses. And then this grass. Same thing as the other grass. Hate it most of the year. And then in the fall, it comes out with these plumes. So I love it. For a few months, I'm not sure what happened. Why is it flopping over? I don't know if something landed in there. I'm not sure. Then I have... Oh, not much to look at here. There's a bunch of hostas here. Here off to my, this is off of our garage. I have a beautiful echinacea. Look how pretty that is with the snow. Um, Russian sage, which still smells good. Well, now it's covered in ice, but I would like brush it with my hands occasionally and then Oh, yep. Still smell it. <laughs> Smells so good. There's a little goose planter. Same things, you know, Russian sage, echinacea. I have some more asters. But yeah, everything's just kind of shut down for winter. Okay, you guys, that is it. We are back where we started. That's it for my January garden tour. Maybe I should have gone into more detail about some of the plants, but I don't know how much you want to see when they're all dormant and looked at. <laughs> but I was so excited to get the snow. I had to run out and just capture some of the beauty. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.